the electrons and atoms take distinctive energy levels. We see that when we look at the light that we can generate from an atom. We excite it with an electron and it gives off very distinct uh, energies, of, energies of light. This corresponds to the transitions between distinct energy levels. So we have distinct energy levels. In the hydrogen atom, we only need one quantum number to describe those energy levels. The principal quantum number, n. n is a counting number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It goes on, there's no upper end on that. For other atoms to describe energy, we're gonna need the first quantum number, the principal quantum number, we're gonna need the second quantum number, the azimuthal or angular momentum quantum number. And that uh, we use L to represent. And that has, um, starts from zero and goes up to n minus one. So this one has a limit to it. So the n, the principal quantum number, is the principal energy level. This one is the sublevel. We're going to have a total of four quantum numbers to describe our uh, electrons in an atom. So we have our principal energy level, principal quantum number, our sublevel, the angular momentum quantum number. Then the next one is the magnetic quantum number, uh, m sub l. And it has a range from negative L counting up until we hit L. And this is gives us the alignment in the magnetic field. It also gives us orientation in space. And the total number of M sub L numbers is the total number of orbitals in that sublevel. Then the last quantum number is the spin quantum number, M sub S. And this is for the electron uh, directly, its alignment in a magnetic field. It has a value of either positive one half or negative. We can call those spin up or spin down. The one half actually refers to the uh, rotational symmetry of the electron, but we don't cover that. Uh, you might get that in physical chemistry. So our Principal energy levels do not correspond directly to the period numbers on the period because we're going to have a, a shift um, going on with these numbers. But uh, the sublevel, sublevel uh, shows up in how we structure our periodic table. So we have our lowest sublevel S. So if you look at our principal energy level, uh, the L number can go from zero up to N minus one. So zero up to one minus one, which is zero. So it can only go up to zero. And that's our first sublevel S. So our first two elements have that hydrogen, helium, then lithium and beryllium on level two. Then we're going to go into the second sublevel. So level two, does that L equals zero, does L equals one. And the letters for that would be S for zero, P for one. So this is our P area over here. Our D in the middle, our F for the two on the bottom. So what we see is for sublevels, we're gonna have uh, the number of sublevels that match the N number. So we have one sublevel for n equals one. Now we sublevel s. We have two, l equals zero and one for level two. So that would be s and p. We have three for level three, zero and two. That's s, p, d. Four for level four, zero, one, two, three, s, p, d, f. And it continues on from there. We only see those four sublevels on our current periodic table. For the M sub L, that's based on L. So for S, L equals zero, M sub L can only be zero. It goes from negative L up to L, so zero up to zero. And what that's telling us is that we have one orbital. These numbers also refer to a, a magnetic 
magnetic uh, moment that we get from these orbitals in the magnetic field. Uh, but we're just primarily concerned about how many orbitals we're getting off of this. So L equals one, our sublevel P, we have uh, M sub L of negative one, zero, one. We have three orbitals coming off of this. For L equals two, that's sublevel D, we have negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, a total of five numbers, five orbitals. L equals three, that's sublevel F, we have negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, total of seven numbers, seven orbitals. So the last uh, spin quantum number, uh, M sub S, can be either plus one, plus two, we have a, a rule, Pauli exclusion principle, that in an atom, uh, no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. So we can have our N, L, M sub L, M sub S. But that means that we can have these three the same when we have two electrons, one one half, one a negative one half, so a spin up, a spin down electron. So we can have two electrons in each orbital uh, of, of an atom. So S has one orbital, it has two columns that represents the two electrons. So number of columns on the periodic table represent number of electrons. For P block here, we have three orbitals times our two electrons. We have six columns, six electrons. D, we have five orbitals times two electrons is 10 electrons. We have 10 columns on the D block. For F, we have seven orbitals times two is 14. We have 14 down here in the uh, inner transition elements. Typically, our newer periodic tables tend to pull these two boxes down here. So we have 15 down here because we have taken two from the D. And the reason is we haven't quite decided which end of this row really belongs up there. The filling pattern is a little interesting. We'll cover this a little bit more in the next chapter also. So we do our level one, we have sublevel S. So one, we have S. Two, we have S and P. We have S and P. Three, we have SPD, we have SP, but the D isn't on the same level. The D slides down. So what happens is that the sublevels are not all the same energy level. They were in the hydrogen atom because there's only one electron in there. With the additional electrons, it makes these sublevels split in energy. So they keep going up in energy. So S is lower energy than P, which is lower energy than D, which is lower energy than F. So that 3D, instead of being on the same row of 3P and 3S, it drops down a row. So as we fill up 3P, we fill up 4S first, and then we go back and fill up with 3D. And F is even lower down. So our 4F, the first time we see F is on 4F, but our 4F is on period six. So it drops down another level uh, compared to the D. So we have to know these rules, what numbers are allowed. And we're going to be asking a question based on that and also asking where, how to represent them in the atom here. And representation of the atom, the only two that we really can represent are the principal quantum number and the angular momentum quantum number. So we can say level and sublevel. So if we want to say that we had a, a chromium atom, which is about there, we have a 3D electron there. So we could say three, N equals three. And we could say that L equals two. We can't really say what orbital it's in, so we can't say what M sub L it's in. And it can be either spin up or spin down. Either number is acceptable. If we give one, we can say the positive one is spin up, the negative one is spin down. So let's look at some problems from the double-sided worksheet. OK, 
Okay, so the problem was, what's the maximum number of electrons can have n equals one? Well, principal energy level n equals one. Our sub level is zero up to n minus one, so we only have one sub level L equals zero. Now see S S sub level. So we're dealing with a uh, we only have the option of one S. Um, the m sub L is zero, goes from negative L to L. So we only have one orbital. We can pull two electrons in there, one spin up, one spin down. So we only have two electrons. Another question, what is the angular momentum quantum number, L, of 4s orbital? Well, the principal quantum number doesn't matter. We see that we have s for L goes from 0 on up, 0, 1, 2, 3, on up to n minus 1. But 0 is s, so we're dealing with a s orbital, so that means L equals 0. How many orbitals can have the designation of 1s. Well, 1 is the principal quantum number, n equals 1. s means that we're dealing with l equals 0. Uh, we have um, m sub l can only be 0, goes from negative l to l. So we only have one orbital here. Up here, next question we're given. Our set of quantum numbers, n equals 3, l equals 0, m sub l equals 0, m sub s equals minus 1. We want to describe this in an atom. So n equals 3 is level 3. l equals 0 is the sublevel s. So we have a 3s electron. The spin is a negative 1 and half, so we can call that spin down. So we have a 3s electron uh, spin down. Going the opposite direction, uh, give a set of quantum numbers for the highest energy electron in the aluminum atom. So we looked up aluminum on the parent table and it's in the 3p block. So 3 means n equals 3. p, p is going to be l equals 1. So we've got l equals 1. And those are the only two that we can really specify. But if we have to give the whole set, we have to give valid numbers for the next two. So L can go for, from a negative one up to a one, negative L to L. So we have three options there, one, zero, one, one, negative one, zero. Any one of those numbers is a valid answer. For the MS, it's always only two options, positive one half or negative one half. So either one of those is a valid answer. Another question was um, the M sub L, Quantum number describes what in an atom? And it's describing the magnetic properties of the atom. So uh, if we put it in a magnetic field, the different orbitals will take different uh, arrangements in the magnetic field. Uh, orientation space, also we have our, for uh, the P sub level, such as this, we give it designations of PX, PY, PZ. Uh, based on Cartesian coordinates. So we're orientating the, the orbitals along x, y, z coordinate axis. They are going to be uh, perpendicular to each other um, regardless of what axis system that we use. Uh, also, the number of these uh, gives the number of orbitals. 